Welcome back to another GTN Coaches Corner Christmas edition. Woo! Uh, as always, we're going to be answering your triathlon training related questions. And understandably, we have a number regarding the festive season. Do you train hard during the festival Christmas season? And do you train on Christmas Day? Well, we'll get to all of that. Uh, but first, this question from Mary. And she asks, I plan to keep training, but realistically, I'll probably fall off the triathlon wagon and overindulge this festive season. Same as all of us, I guess. What's the best way to limit the damage to my fitness if I do happen to overindulge? Well, uh, this is a pretty common question, I think, over Christmas. Most people, it depends on their goals, I suppose. They're just gonna kind of take it as it comes. If they have really serious goals, they maybe have uh, planned that in their Christmas festivities, and then they tend to overindulge anyway. <laughs> Don't we all? So what you have to do is recover from it. And the best way is to start by rehydrating. Yeah, and also a bit of a detox after that. And I think the thing that a lot of us fall into trap of doing is feeling guilty for the lack of training we may have um, achieved over that period, and then try to make up for it. And that is not the answer. No, definitely not. You can do some serious damage to your body if you, you know, you feel guilty mentally. You're like, well, I'm going to flog myself tomorrow because yesterday I, I really overindulged in the Christmas party. That's not a good idea. Uh, what you really need to do is give your body a break. Even if your mind really wants to wants to flog yourself, give your body a break. Let it recover from that big party, uh, and then you can build back into your training. If you do feel like you absolutely have to do something, uh, do it light. Keep the heart rate low, and then. Use that energy to maybe plan ahead and plan your season, plan your next few weeks, plan your build back to fitness so that your mind can settle down and be at ease with the plan that's that's coming up, uh, but your body doesn't get flogged for already getting flogged at the Christmas party. <laughs> but also actually, there's a really good point because yes, we feel guilty, we feel like we've achieved very little, but if you plan that training and that season now, you can see in a few weeks time that actually, your mileage is going to be ramping up and actually you're going to feel a lot more happy and comfortable knowing that's to come rather than panicking and trying to get it all done in the next few days. But yeah, good question. Uh, next one from just John P says, I'm a fat guy with a moderate to low level of fitness returning to triathlon to get fitter. I work full time and I struggle to get more than six to eight hours a week um, to train and it's not regular days at regular times. I've done an Olympic distance triathlon a couple of years ago and I plan now to do a 70.3 at the end of 2022 or early 2023. What would be the best split in my training for each discipline or is it even possible on that many hours per week? Whoa, well, uh Difficult question. It is possible to do a 70.3 on that much training a week, but it's gonna be a little bit difficult. Uh, and you're gonna to have to be pretty crafty with how you structure your training. Uh, ideally, if you do two swims, two bikes, two runs, you're, and one of those, each of those is slightly longer, uh, you're already pretty close to your eight hours a week. So as you can see, if you're gonna fit in strength work, speed work, uh, you know, hills, that kind of stuff, you're gonna to have to do more than one discipline, more than one challenge in each in each session. So you might have to do hills at the beginning of a session and then make it the longer ride. Uh, or some strength at the beginning of the session and then finish it off with a few faster speed stuff. You are gonna have to get a bit crafty if you're gonna fit in the right training uh, in that few hours. But it is possible. Yeah, it is possible. But conversely, if you are worried about the amount of hours that you can devote to this, maybe choose a, another goal, a more realistic goal, perhaps as an Olympic distance that then you can accomplish more easily and actually maybe have more fun in doing it and achieve something that you are more proud of. Yeah, maybe, maybe doing a better Olympic distance than your previous one is a more realistic goal than doing a 70.3 that you're totally on your limits for and you're actually not gonna enjoy the process because it's too close to the absolute limit of what you can spare time-wise. And I, I, an important point, and the thing that I am regularly reminding people, why do you do triathlon? Because it's a hobby, it's fun. So make it fun. You know, I know it's great setting these, these hard challenges and goals, but if it's totally out of your realms and you are panicking and stressing all year round, is that fun? Or would you actually rather enjoy something that is just pushing you on a little bit more? And you can definitely lose that weight doing training for Olympic distance, you don't need to do a 70.3. More distance doesn't mean more weight loss at all. No, absolutely. Brilliant question though, um, and I'm sure a lot of people um, will relate to that. Next one from William Hobbs. 
I'm heading away over Christmas with the family and really worried about losing my fitness over the break. Any tips to navigate the festive season without losing fitness? Well, very similar question to our, our first question from Mary. Uh, understandable, uh, maybe he isn't planning to overindulge, but he, he is sure that his training schedule is gonna get a little bit of a, a mix up over Christmas as it does for almost everyone. What you need to understand is you can reduce your training. You will take a small fitness dip, I suppose, but if you see it as a recovery week and it's built into your program uh, and you come back really strong in January, you're not gonna lose much fitness at all. In fact, you might gain some fitness by starting January really fresh and ready to fire and hit those first few sessions really well. So don't stress about reducing your training a little bit and being kind to yourself over Christmas. Yeah, a similar question now from Jasper Conrad. Do you train on Christmas Day or put your feet up? And I guess this is a directed at us personally. Um, personally, I treat Christmas Day as a bit of a rest day. We're training hard all year round, making these sacrifices, both yourself and your family. So I personally use Christmas Day as an opportunity just to enjoy that time with the family. At most, I might head out for a very short jog and actually each year we try to, as a family, don the Christmas hats, the Santa hats, head out for a short jog. Even my brother who hates running. Some years, admittedly, it's literally five to 10 minutes, but other years we actually managed quite a good distance. Uh, we get them onto the trails and I think I managed about 50 minutes at my brother one year, but it's really fun. Um, but yeah, you know, it's entirely up to you whatever you enjoy doing on Christmas day. Yeah, back when I was a pro athlete, I would probably try and get something in, uh, maybe an hour run or something. These days, ah, uh, roughly five days a week or recovery days, so I may as well just take Christmas Day <laughs> off anyway. Uh, yeah, but plan with your family, include your family, include your relatives uh, in a session. It's gonna keep a little bit of fitness, but also it'll be enjoyable and everyone will enjoy the rest of their day even more. So do something like Mark's doing if you do need to get out there, but don't feel you have to. You can absolutely just take a day to indulge. Yeah, it's one day. You are not going to lose fitness in that one day. Uh, next question um, from Quinley Cascal. How do I keep swimming up over the festive period? And this is a really good question. And I think a lot of people stress about this because obviously swimming pools close over the festive period mostly around Christmas Day and New Year's Day. And some pools may actually close between that whole period and not reopen between Christmas and New Year. And obviously this caused havoc for us triathletes and swimmers because we need to keep our swimming up. Uh, so what I've often tried to do is I might do a swim up to that final day that I possibly can in the swimming pool before they close and maybe even an extra session in that week leading in. And then as soon as that pool reopens, I just get back in. If that pool doesn't reopen, you can do some stuff at home, some just land training using stretch cords and whatnot. Um, but if you can't do that or you can't get in the pool in between, when you do start back up, the most important thing you do is not throw yourself in on a really hard, solid session to ease yourself back in gradually. I think a lot of people are looking at this and going, what, we've just had 18 months of pandemic with the pools closed. If you, if you don't know how to deal with that for a week over Christmas, where have you been? Uh, yeah, I think everyone's gonna, gonna know what to do. Like Mark says, do some stretch cords if you absolutely have to and you can't get to the pool. Uh, but again, be kind to yourself, miss a couple days, you're not gonna lose too much. Do a bit of stretching, make sure your arms stay supple and 1st of January comes, 2nd of January comes, you'll be ready to go on your swimming. Final question today, and uh, this one, well, uh, it's the same one again, isn't it? Fred Whitley asks, asking for a friend, is it okay to train hungover? Well, <laughs> uh, I, I guess that's re uh, uh, relevant, rele relevant to the uh, Christmas season because uh, let's face it, we're all going to get a hangover at some point. Should you train when you're hungover or should you just uh, stay in bed and feel sorry for yourself? Well, yeah, this is coming from a very non-scientific angle here, but yeah, knock the intensity back if you are hungover or you enjoyed yourself the night before. Uh, it may seem like the last thing you wanna do, but honestly, and in most cases, you do feel better after a bit of exercise. I appreciate if you are feeling rather nauseous, it may seem like the last thing you wanna do. Um, as I say, very non-scientific because a lot of us talk about sweating it out when you go for a bit of a run or a ride after 
having a few nights on the drinks. Um, actually, what happens is it's just a release of endorphins. You're not really sweating anything out, although you may feel like you're sweating a lot. Um, one thing though for sure is make sure you hydrate well pre and post and during if you are going for something long. Um, obviously, alcohol does end up leaving you quite dehydrated. Yeah, it will dehydrate you a lot, but while it's dehydrating, you'll also flush out a lot of those electrolytes, making you more prone to cramps and, and all that kind of thing. So definitely make sure you rehydrate and take it easy. If you go and try and smash something, uh, you're almost certainly gonna cramp and, and feel sore, and that's not what you want. So yeah, get out there if you can, if you can stomach it, uh, but again, be kind to your body. It's, uh, it's already been through a lot and it's dealing with a lot of uh, toxins that you've thrown at it. So maybe don't throw some uh, challenges at it right this minute. Uh, give it a 24 hours to recover, get your hydration back, and then you can get back to training. Yeah, fantastic questions though, guys. And please do keep them coming in using that hashtag GTN Coaches Corner. But lastly from us, guys, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.